All right, 7.2, we're going to learn about properties of exponential functions. So a little bit of a review from what we've done in the past. If I have an equation or a function that is in the form of y equals mx plus b, or if it looks like y is equal to like 2x plus 4, something like this, where it's in this form, what type of graph do you think it is? Linear, it's the graph of a line. It'd be a linear graph, it looks something like that. So anything that has this form has the graph of a line. Looking at the next one, when we have x squared, what does that tell us our graph is gonna look like? It looks like a U looks like this. Whenever our x is squared, it's called a parabola. A graph is going to be in the shape of a parabola, but it's that u shape. So these are like parent functions of our graphs, and we have transformations that happen to these as how our graph changes. But it always keeps that same shape. It either just shifts somewhere, stretches, compresses, things like that. So today... We're going to be graphing exponential functions. So exponential functions is when that x is in the exponent. And our exponential graph always has this shape. It starts really, really small and then gets really big really quickly. Or it does the opposite where it starts really big and then gets really, really small. Like this. So it always has one of these two shapes. So we have the general form of an exponential function. B is our base, and it's always going to be a constant. So it'll be like 2, 3, 4, some number like that. 1 half, it could be. X is our exponent. So X will always be up top in the exponent. And that's what gives our graph the exponential shape. So these are the two different types of shapes. We could have exponential growth. So if I had a graph that was like y is equal to 2 to the power of x, this shows exponential growth when it starts really, really small and gets really big. When this number is greater than 1, it is growth. Or if I had a graph that was y is equal to 1 half to the power of x, like this. Since this is a fraction and it's less than 1, it's exponential decay. So it starts really big and gets really small. And then our asymptote is the horizontal line that we get really, really close to but don't cross. So it's the line y equals 0. So just know that there's like an imaginary line there, a table, where our, our graph is going to get really, really close, but it can't go through the table there. And then we have transformations that change our graph. So if the number that's being multiplied out front is a fraction, so if it's in between 0 and 1, so this means if it's a fraction or if it is a decimal, then we have a compression or shrink. If it's a number greater than 1, it's a stretch. If it's negative, it would be a reflection. And then we also have translation. So that's a vertical or horizontal shift. If it's happening directly to the X, so if it's in these parentheses here, this means that we move left or right.
If I add a number in the parentheses, which direction do you think I'm going, left or right? If I add a number. Remember, inside the parentheses, it's the opposite of what you would think. So if you add, you're going to the left. If you subtract a number, you go to the right. So we've done this before, but it's been a minute. So, but it's the same, same transformations that we've had before. It just looks a little bit different because now that x is in the exponent. And then what do you think if we add a number on the outside, what's going to happen to our graph? It goes up or down. So if we add a number, it'll be going up. If we subtract a number, it goes down. So these are our transformations. So let's graph. We're graphing 2 to the power of x. My so 2 to the power of x, how can I figure out where points on my graph are going to be? Do what? Pick random points and do what with those random points? Awesome. Plug them into the equation. So what do you think some good random numbers are going to be that we can plug in? Perfect. 0, 1, 2, and we want to plug in negative 1. It's always good to plug in a negative number and a positive number. You can plug in these points every single time. So you always want to plug in points. You can plug in whatever you want, but these are good numbers to work with. Just because they're small, they're going to be the easiest ones to plug in. So step one is plug in numbers. So let's plug it in. My equation's 2 to the power of x, so that number that I picked, negative 1, is going to go into the exponent. So 2 to the power of negative 1. Does anybody remember what a negative exponent does to our number? Doesn't make it negative, nope. What does a negative exponent do? We flip it. <laughs> You flip it. So instead of it being 2 over 1, what do we flip it to? It's positive, so 1 half. The negative exponent just means that you flip it. So it doesn't make it a negative number. We just flip it. So instead of being 2 to the power of negative 1, it's 1 half. Here's another tricky one that you got to think back. What is 2 to the power of 0? Nope. One. Anything that has the exponent of zero is one. So two to the power of zero is one. All right, this one should be a little bit easier. What is two to the power of one? Two. two. And then what is two to the power of two? Four. Four. Perfect. So the numbers that I plugged in, those numbers in my first column are the x values, so negative one, and then the number that I got is my y value. So it'll be negative 1, comma, 1 half. And then 0, comma, 1. And then 1, comma, 2. And 2, comma, 4. So we go to our graph and we plot these points. Which way do I go? Left or right? I go to the left to negative 1, and then where? Up 1 half. Perfect. So that's my first point. My next point is 0, comma 1. So where do I go there? Stay on 0 and go up 1. And then I have 1, comma 2. So where would I go there? Right 1, up 2. And then 2, comma 4. You go to the right 2 and up four and then I just connect the dots so just looking at this graph does it have exponential growth or decay growth because it starts really small because we read graphs just like we read words from left to right so it starts really small and grows it gets bigger 
But we also know that it has exponential growth because this number here is greater than 1, so that tells us that we have growth. All right, so here our graph is 2x plus 3. So I'm adding 3 on the outside. What type of transformation does this mean? Which way? Up 3. Remember, when you're adding it on the outside, it's up or down. If you add it, you go up. So we know that we're going to have that same graph shape that we just had in the last one. We're shifting it up three. But we're going to do the same exact thing we just did. We plug in numbers first. So what are good numbers to plug in? Perfect. Negative one, zero, one, and two. You can plug in whatever numbers you want, but these will always be the easiest to work with. So let's plug them in. I have 2 to the power of negative 1 plus 3. Remember, you have to keep the order of operation. So what would I do first here? I have to do the exponent first. So what is 2 to the power of negative 1? Perfect. Remember that negative 1 flips it. So it becomes 1 half. And then I have 1 half plus 3. So I could just say this is 3 and 1 half. You could change it into an improper fraction if you wanted to. Find a common denominator. You'll get the same thing, or you could just leave it as a mixed number. You could put 3.5. Because you're going to graph it, so as long as you know where it goes on the graph. 3.5 is the same as 3 and a half. Either way it works. Next, I'm going to plug in 0. So I have 2 to the power of 0 plus 3. What is 2 to the power of 0? 1. And 1 plus 3? 4. Then I plug in 1. So 2 to the power of 1. And 2 plus 3? 5. And then I plug in 2. So 2 to the power of 2 would be what? Bless you. 4. 2 squared is 4. And 4 plus 3? 7. So my points here are going to be negative 1 and 3 and a half. Then I have 0, 4, 1, 5, and 2, 7. So we go to our graph and plot our points. So my first point, where do I go? To the left, negative 1, and up 3.5. My next point, where do I go? Stay on 0, go up 4. And then the next one? To the right, 1, up 5. And then the last one? 2 to the right and up 7. So our graph looks like this. So it keeps that same shape. The only difference is I just shifted it up 3 spots. Is this exponential growth or decay? Growth. growth. Since this number that has the exponent is greater than 1, it's growth. And then we also can see that it's getting bigger, so it's growing. All right, here I have plus 2 that's happening directly to the x. So what type of transformation is happening here? Which way? To the left, too. But let's do the same thing we just did. We're going to plot points. So what are good numbers that I can plug in? Negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. These will always be good numbers. So here I have 2 to the power of negative 1 plus 2. What do I have to do first here? The parentheses first. Remember PEMDAS to do the parentheses first. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. And what is 2 to the power of 1? 2. Then I'm going to plug in 0, so I have 2 to the power of 0 plus 2. 
So 2, 0 plus 2 is 2. And what's 2 squared? 4. So then I have 2 to the power of 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. So what is 2 to the power of 3? 8. Awesome. And then plug in 2. So 2 plus 2 would be 4. What is 2 to the power of 4? 16. Perfect. So my points are going to be negative 1, 2, 0, 4, 1, 8, and 2, 16. So to plot my first point, I'm going to go to the left to negative 1 and up to, where does the next point go? Stay at zero, go up four, and then the next one? One to the right and up eight, and then the last one? Two to the right and up 16, so it's just gonna be off our graph a little bit, but that's fine. And then our graph has this shape here. Is this exponential growth or decay? This is exponential growth. It's getting bigger. So just by looking at this graph, what do you think? Is it going to be growth or decay? Decay. Why do you think it's decay? Because it's a fraction. So since that's less than 1, we know that it's going to be decay. So right off the bat, we know that it's going to be going down like this. So it starts high and goes low. So we know it's going to have this shape. So that's good to keep in mind when we plug in our numbers and graph our points. Because we know if it doesn't have that shape, then maybe we plug it in a number wrong. So what are some good numbers I can plug in here? Awesome. Same thing from before. Negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I have 1 half to the power of negative 1. What does that negative exponent do to my number here? Flips it. So if I have a fraction and I flip it, what does it become? A normal number? It becomes 2. So instead of 1 over 2, it becomes 2 over 1, which is just 2. Then I have 1 half to the power of 0. What's a number to the power of 0? 1. one. Awesome. Any number to the power of 0 is 1. And then 1 half to the power of 1 would be 1 half. And what about 1 half to the power of 2? Quarter. Perfect, a quarter. So it's like saying 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 over 4. Awesome. So then our points here are negative 1, 2, 0, 1. 1, 1 half, and 2, 1 fourth. So then to plot my first point, where would I put it? To the left, to negative 1, and up 2. Then my next point. Stay at 0, up 1. Then the next one. To the right one, up one half, and then the last one. To the right two, and up one fourth. So my graph looks like this. Which is that DK shape, because it's going down. Okay, one thing that I wanted to point out with the homework Make sure you plug in four points, just like we did for all the ones in the notes. You have to plug in four points for every question on the homework. Okay, If you don't plug in the four points, you're not going to get full credit for the homework. Also, there's some on the homework where it's like 2 times 2 to the power of x. If I plug in a number here, what's the number I could plug in for x? 
negative one, sure, because that'll be the first one that we plug in. If I plug in negative one here, it'll be two times two to the power of negative one. What do I have to do first? The exponent, you have to do this one first. What's two to the power of negative one? One half, so this is two times one half, which would be what? Perfect, it's one. So it becomes two over two, which is just one. So remember, you have to follow your order of operations. PEMDAS. You gotta do the exponent first. Exponent comes before multiplication. Keep that in mind.